get an agreement in principle in five minutes. Let me tell you why I think that's a very dangerous idea. And I think that it puts uh, a lot of people, that gives them a false sense of security. And many, many people often get rejected once they've been accepted for a decision in principle and some of the reasons why. Hi everybody, it's Payam here and I am an independent mortgage broker at Niche Advice. I've set up this channel to talk everything to do with mortgages. Now, let's talk about a topic that I keep on seeing because uh, YouTube keeps on sending me adverts on it, which is decision in principles and getting your decision in principles in 10 minutes, in 5 minutes, in 15 minutes. Um, and why I don't think they're actually, those sort of very quick decision in principle systems are very good. And often they give uh, people a wrong sense of uh, security, really. Um, why I always believe that uh, getting an agreement principle why someone who's actually looked at it is is probably a preferred uh, a better way so let's talk about it so um uh, i keep on seeing every time i go on there i've got lenders and i will not name them because i do business with them but their direct branches are sort of doing adverts to say you know they'll do an agreement principle in 10 minutes i've also seen a lot of online mortgage brokers out there doing similar sort of things saying you we can give you an agreement in principle in in in, in a few minutes just fill in this form and that's it so let's, I suppose, for us to start on the topic is what is an agreement in principle or a decision in principle? It's basically, um, there's two different types and these are the different things that you need to be aware of, guys. A, it's a, an agreement in principle from a broker, right, an online broker or a broker is very different from an agreement in principle from a lender, okay? An agreement in principle from a broker, it means that they've probably credit checked you and they've run some affordability uh, elements on it. And they've said, yeah, based on what you've said, we think the lenders will agree to give you this. That's not getting an agreement in principle from the lender. It's getting an agreement in principle from the broker. Now, a lot of people will not accept that. So it's just a marketing ploy. Uh, I remember we used to do that like, I don't know, eight years ago, seven years ago, I used to have a little certificate that says, you've got an agreement in principle from Niche Advice. But then when I looked at it and from a compliance perspective, it sort of muddies the water because it's not an agreement in principle from the lender. And I think ultimately a lot of the estate agents, a lot of the developers want to know that the lenders are willing to lend to you. Not what the brokers say. At the end of the day, a broker can tell you whatever. I can say, yep, you've got an agreement in principle from me. Here's a stamp. There you go. Okay. But... Is that, you know, is that an actual agreement in principle? So that's one thing. So be aware of, you know, these online agreement principles. They may have run a credit check. They may have run an affordability, but they may not be the actual lenders uh, one. But the ones that I keep on seeing on, on the adverts on YouTube are actual lenders. Um, and what the lenders are saying is, look, you know, run an agreement in principle. Some of them are soft searches. Um, and they will say, look, we'll run an agreement in principle and we'll tell you quickly whether we can lend you what you want to lend, you know, what you want to borrow. Um, and why I think that's quite dangerous and often I get calls from clients that have done one of these, found the property, gone through the whole process and all of a sudden they've been rejected, they've been turned down. And there are many, many reasons why this happens. Uh, the basics is no one's looked at it, okay? An expert hasn't looked at it. And a group in principle, basically the lender system goes out there and says, what's your income? What's your property value? What's the deposit amount? Um, where, where have you lived? And they'll run a credit check and they'll do a basic affordability to see if it fits. Now, and then they'll give you an agreement in principle. What an agreement in principle from a broker often, or let's just take us for example, but it, pretty much all brokers, um, they will be doing a lot more due diligence before running a credit check, or they should be, okay? So uh, to get an agreement in principle from us is a bit of a pain. It's certainly not 10 minutes, but... Um, we will check your bank statements. We will check your pay slips. We will check your payments in terms of overtime, benefits, pension contributions, any loans you've got, how do they get affected? Um, and then we will check the property, for example, if you found the property. We will go through your fact find. We will look at some of the gaps in the fact find. We will try to spot if there's any issues. We will look at transactions, uh, maybe over a £1,000 coming into your bank statements that we need answers to. We will look at unusual activity within the bank statements. 
all of a sudden you might have a load of gambling debts because you know there's the big boxing i know there's a big boxing on this weekend so you might have put some money on billy joe saunders or you might have put some money on canelo but um you know but you might have done that 10 times last year because you might have seen last week's fight um, that could have a bearing on the lender you could have other money coming in that's not disclosed you could have a child that you haven't disclosed but we can see the child benefit there's all sorts of things within those bank statements and within those documentation and within the proof of ID, proof, proof of deposit, all of those things we check. And then we will process that with the relevant lender. Now this is where different brokers deal differently. Uh, for us, we will always represent the lender to you. So we will represent, present the lender to you. So we would always say, look, we believe this is the lender, this is the rate, these are the costs, these are the documentation we need. Uh, you know, these are the overall pricing structure. These are our fees. Everything has to be given to you. You then agree it. I have been known that there are brokers out there that will say they don't really give you the lender name. They'll just give you like, this is the rate. This is the roughly cost. And that's about it. Um, I'm not a big fan of that. I just think, look, you give the information to the clients. If the clients buy you, if the clients build up a good rapport with you, um, they'll use you. If not, then I don't really want to be dealing with clients that don't want to deal with us. So it doesn't matter that they know who the lender is. Even if it's a specialist case, even if it's a complicated case, I tell you who the lender is because knowing who the lender is and knowing a rate on a product is one thing. Getting a mortgage, actually getting an application done, it's a totally different ballgame. So, um, you know, you've got to be a little bit confident, I suppose, from, from my perspective, is look, you either want to deal, deal with us or not. Um, if you're just going to rate chase and go and speak to me and five other people, then so be it. You can do that. But don't expect me to put you at the priority list when you come back to us later on um, if, if there's been problems with the others. But, yeah, I'm, I'm, don't be fooled by marketing. There, you know, uh, agreement in principle is just half of it. There are lots of things that people check out. For example, agreement in principle often does not take into account property types. Okay, so many times people have got like ex council, council properties or ex local properties or properties above shops or near commercial facilities and stuff. Just because the lenders run a credit check and affordability, just because you can afford it, doesn't mean that that, that lender is willing to lend. There's lots of reasons why lenders will not lend on various things that are not captured at decision in principle and are only done on a um, full application. Okay. Also, another thing that people get a false sense of security from on a decision in principle, some of these soft footprints are not deep searches, okay? So if you've got a history of adverse credit, it's been known that it gets accepted at decision in principle, but when a full hard search happens at application, the case gets rejected. So again, you're running around trying to find properties, doing deals because you think you've got an agreement in principle, but because it was a soft search or because it wasn't a deep enough search, because you didn't disclose the adverse to the lender, it gets it gets rejected afterwards. Where if you deal with a broker, you disclose that to us, and then we can then work with you, and we will know the history of that lender. Um, you know, sometimes they're borderline, and we'll say, okay, well, we might as well give it a go. Sometimes we'll say, well, no, definitely they will not do it. Um, so, you know, those are the reasons why, you know, you've got to you've got to take the the quick decision in principle systems with a pinch of salt. They have improved. Things are getting better. Things are getting streamlined a lot more. Uh, we've certainly got a lot more streamlined, but, you know, there is something, you know, at the end of the day, you're paying for a service and you want some guidance on a huge investment that you're going to make, whether it's a residential mortgage or whether it's inve uh, investment properties. Um, you know, it's always good to get someone to look at it. Uh, anyway, I'll catch you on the next one. I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot. Take care. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.